Hallelujah. Come on, one more time. Can we give God some praise? Come on, let's give God a high praise this morning. Come on, let's give God praise higher. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We lift you up. And if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Can somebody lift up his name this morning? The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, help me lift them up this morning. I see you fans. Come on, help me lift them up. Hallelujah. Lift up the name of Jesus. What's his name? Come on, take it high. Give God the highest praise. Lord, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let everything they have break. We just praise God one more time. Can we put our hands together? I know we're not supposed to be touching each other, but our hands can touch together. Clap your hands. All you people. Come on, come on, clap somebody. Clap your hands, all these people, and shout for the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. Come on, come on, can we clap a little? Come on, take our clap a little higher. Hallelujah, higher. Higher, higher, higher. Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. Higher, higher. God has given us a higher praise. In this season, God has has given us a higher, a higher praise. And I would ask if um, um, everyone can, uh, let's please stand. First, I want to welcome everyone to Living Word Fellowship Church. And then welcome our family and friends that are here. Welcome uh, our live online audience. Can we just give God praise one more time? Let's put our hands together and just lift up Jesus. Help me lift him up. Y'all said y'all going to help me lift him up. Can y'all help me lift up the Savior today? Help me lift up the Savior Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Away with quiet church. Come on, let's lift up our voices. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God. And then while you're standing, we're going to read this passage of scripture. Uh, today, um, we want to talk about finding, finding Jesus. Finding uh, Jesus uh, in this time, in this season um, is so important and don't think that just because you've been with him a long time that you uh, can't lose sight of his presence, lose sight of his power. Uh, in this season um, it is definitely time for the church uh, to reveal the power of God, the power that God has placed in us and, 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 and it's sometimes it's hard uh, if we don't see the power uh, especially in the church God's presence is here his power is here and, and sometimes we come to church and we uh, uh, and we don't realize it is it's because we've lost sight of him uh, not because he's left us because the word of God says he'll never leave us anybody believe God's word he'll never leave us he'll never leave us forsake us and he never will I promise I promise he's a promise keeper uh, but sometimes we can lose sight of his presence lose sight uh, of his power and, and and I wouldn't submit to you that uh, the reason that happens is simply because we uh, we lose sight of our priorities uh, we we forget what's important and try to take care of what we see as immediate uh, but God wants us to shift our focus and look to the hills from which cometh our help and lift up our Savior. Can we lift up our voice and give God a high praise one more time? Come on, lift your voice. Come on, that's good. I, I got to feel the whole thing here. Come on. Come on, lift it higher, higher. God is elevated. In Luke, the second chapter, Luke, the second chapter, I'm going to start right in verse 41, referring to Jesus now. 
His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up. Wow, I love it already. They went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother did not even know it. But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and saw him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Now, so it was after three days. Oh my God, I feel, I feel the Holy Spirit all over that. After three days, somebody shout three days. <laughs> After three days, they found him. I, I dare somebody, even before I'm finished reading God's word, somebody declare, I found Jesus. I found Jesus. I found Jesus. I found his power. I found his presence. I found his healing. I found Jesus. Woo! They found him. <laughs> they found him right here, right here, right here, right here in the temple sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them. Jesus was listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, I can't hear Mary fussing, boy! <laughs> I just see, I just see Mary. In my sanctified imagination. <laughs> Boy, what you do this to us for? Why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. Mm. And he said to them, now he didn't say this. I want y'all to understand this. He didn't say this in a disrespectful manner. He said this in a very respectful manner. Why do you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was, watch this, subject to them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. Father God, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify you, God. God, we thank you for your power. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your precious gift of your son, Jesus. We thank you, God, that as Jesus is in us, the hope of glory, God, that the same way that he is increasing in wisdom and stature and in favor with men, God, that we, your people, are increasing in favor, God, and stature, God, and wisdom with God and men. God, we say thank you. Father, we praise you. We lift up our voices to say thank you, God. We say thank you and we praise you, God, for the growth that's happening on the inside of us, God. God, for thank for everyone that has lost something in this season. For everyone that has lost, God, a job or lost a loved one, God. God, or had lost their health, God. God, we thank you, God, that when they find Jesus, God, that they have everything they need. And we thank you, God. We thank you, God, for causing us to see God. See Jesus, God. That he'll never leave us, never forsake us, God. God, we give you all the glory. We give you all the power. And it is in Jesus' precious name that we pray. Amen, 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 and amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I found Jesus before you take it. Just look at him and say, I found, I found, I found, I found Jesus. I found. I know, I know he didn't leave me and I know he wasn't lost. But I'm so glad that I, that I found I found Jesus. I found Jesus. It's so important. Uh, 
uh, in this time um, for us to understand that the word of God has so much weight on it. It is not the words that I have. I My words have zero weight. Yes. Uh, if I depended on the words that I have, then I promise you I would not be standing before you with a microphone in my hand. Uh, but it is because of the word of God. It is because of the glory of God. And when the glory of God rises up upon me, then whatever I say has the power to change your life. And, 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 and it's nothing, don't misinterpret what I'm saying to you. What I'm telling you is that it's the, when the glory of God, let me show you in Isaiah, the 60th chapter, the very first verse, it says, arise, shine, arise, shine, for your light has come. Watch this. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. That's why no matter where I have been vocationally, uh, and just like all of you, no matter where you go, uh, people say that I don't know what it is, but there is something about you. I don't know. You're not like everybody else. It's, it's that the world can see the, that the light has come. And, and then when they say that, it's just that the glory of the Lord is rising. Somebody shout, rise up, rise up. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. It's something about you. Have you somebody in your job or somebody you don't even know say, there is something about you. And, and see, I'm not saying that so you can get the big head. I don't want you to get the big head because it's not you. It's not about you. Look at somebody say, it's not about you. It's not about you. It's not about you. No, it's the glory of the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And, and when the glory of the Lord rises upon you, no matter what shortcomings you may have as an individual, no matter what shortcomings you may have as a person, when God's glory rises on you, that means the weight of the Lord is on you. God's power is on you. God's presence is on you. And then, and then, and then his word, whatever word you speak, when you speak the word of God, now your words have weight. Because how many know glory is, it means it, above the weight is the weight. And God's weight of glory is on you. And when God's glory rises upon you, you can do anything. You can defeat giants. Listen, you can overcome anything. Because the glory of the Lord is, come on, I, I see God's glory. I, I see it. I see God's glory all on you. Come on, the glory that God is on you. Come on and praise him this morning. Let me show you what I'm talking about. In, 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 in uh, Psalms, the 91st chapter, uh, in Psalms, not 91st chapter, verse 5 says, You shall not be afraid of the terror by night. You shall not. God is, the, is issued out a command that you shall not be afraid. It, you see, the reason you're not afraid is because the glory of God is on you. And you see, he's telling there's no way you're going to be afraid no matter what's happening at night, no matter what neighborhood you live in. See, sometimes we are afraid based on where we, what side of town we live on. Most folks who live on the west side feel like um, they're afraid of the terror uh, by night. Watch this. Watch this at night. Watch this. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor, watch this, the arrow that flies in the day. And, and, the, and the day we're living in, in this season, not only do bullets fly at nighttime, yeah. but bullets fly in the daytime too. But God said, you don't have to worry. Watch this. You don't have to be afraid of the terror by night. Watch this. Nor the arrow that flies by day. Here it is, verse 6. Nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness. The pestilence that walks in darkness are different bacteria, are different diseases uh, that we can't see with our eyes. But God says that you don't have you don't have to be afraid of the pestilence that walks in darkness, meaning that you can't see. There are different bacteria that that that, that are that that are that we come in contact with on a daily basis, and the reason we don't get sick every day is that the glory of the Lord is upon us, and it rises upon us to fight sickness, to fight pestilence. Listen, you don't have to be a. He says, "Fear not; you shall not be afraid of the pestilence that walks in darkness. No bacteria, no virus. Watch this. Nor the destruction that lays at noonday." Night, day, or noonday. What, what, what he's saying is that God has given us 24-hour protection. Listen, God has given us 24-hour protection.
protection. And the, as the glory of the Lord continues to rise on you, there is supernatural protection all around you because the protection is in you. Amen. Come on, if you know that you're covered, come on, give God some praise today. I'm just telling you the word. I'm just telling you so you can understand. And you know this, you know this, but what happens a lot of times is that is that even though we know we have 24-hour protection, round-the-clock protection, Hallelujah. what happens is when we get our priorities off focus and out of line, uh, then we lose sight of our protection yeah. because we lose sight of our priorities. Yeah. What are you talking about, Pastor Lee? Uh, I'm, I'm saying that we have to end our prayers on a daily basis. Watch this. On a daily basis, ask God, God, what's important? What's important? What what is important? What do you what's important to you? What do you want me to do? Uh, and so we have to realize uh, what is important in our lives. And once we realize, once God shows us what's important to Him, then we understand what's important to us. Because see, watch this. The way to know that God's presence is is in your life. The way for you to recognize God's presence, know that we're protected, that God's shield is protecting us from, from destruction, uh, uh, in the arrows that fly in the, uh, uh, at nighttime, in the daytime, terror by night, arrows at noonday. The way that we realize that the shield of protection is protecting us is that we have to know what's important. We have to keep our priorities in order. And you already know that I'm going to say what the word of God says, seek ye first. Seek you first. And watch this. And then when once we realize what's important to God, and then when we know what's important to us, and then when they align themselves with what's important to you, it's the same thing as what's important to God. That's what makes you aware of the presence of God. Amen. See, but when we begin to uh, want to uh, uh, begin to do our own thing and just lose sight of, 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 of what God wants in our lives, because of our own thoughts, our own plans, uh, then we tend to lose focus. And, and here I want to show you this in the text, that here it is, you have uh, Jesus is with his, his mother and father. And what they're saying in the text, it says, that, it says that his parents went to Jerusalem. Went to, it says his parents went to Jerusalem. Watch this. Every year at the feast of the Passover. Meaning that it was their custom. They went to Jerusalem every year. And so it's, it's the, the passage is, is setting you up already to, to show you how you can lose sight of the presence of God. How you can lose. Listen, not that God will ever leave you, but he can be lost. Because you can leave him or lose sight of him. And, and you see that right there. It says every year. So what I'm saying is that what happens all the time that they have a custom that every year that they would go uh, to Jerusalem to honor a custom. It's a custom, a tradition. And see, oftentimes we get so caught up in doing the same things the same way. We get caught up in our customs that we lose sight of God. Yeah. See, we think we come to, as long as we come to church, I come to church on Sunday, so everything's going to be all right. I did my part. I came to church. I, 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 I brought my tithes and offerings. I, you know, they had a song. Um, pastor preached the word. I went home. Everything's all right. And we just get in a custom and we lose sight of the power of God because we do the same thing all the time. We do the same thing all the time. Then what happens is that, uh, what happens is uh, we lose sight of God. Watch this. They went every year. Every year they went to Jerusalem. They went to Jerusalem every year doing the same thing. And what I'm trying to tell you that you can come to church every Sunday. I don't really like preaching this, but I'm going to tell the truth anyhow. You can come to church every Sunday and you can sit there and won't say amen and, 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 and won't and to the word of God and won't do anything, won't get involved in worship. And the reason you get quiet in worship is not because the worship team don't sound good. It doesn't matter what it sounds like. Listen, watch this. And watch this. The, the Bible says, if, if you go to Psalms 100, it, it says that they came into, they came into the, you have to come into singing, singing, which says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, but into his course with praise. Watch this. It says, come before his presence with what? 
singing. What they're talking about, is, what the psalmist is talking about is this very same thing. When you went to Jerusalem, you could just come in Jerusalem. It was part of a custom that you entered the city with singing. You just couldn't walk up in the house of God just coming and in all of your feelings and just any kind of way and thinking about every problem and talking about what's going on. No, no, no. The focus is shifting to God. You had to come into his presence with singing. Every time you come to Jerusalem, you had to come with a song on your heart. Singing to the Lord a new song. That means every time you come, you come with singing. Watch it. This command. It says, enter to his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Listen, listen, listen. Every time you come, it's, he's giving a commandment. Every time you come into his presence, you come with singing. And then watch this. There, there was the, the way you would come into you. There was the outer court, the inner court, and the holy of holies. So even just coming to this presence, you had to be singing. And then once you get a little closer, you had to, God commanded that you come with thanksgiving. I dare somebody to say, thank you, Jesus, that I'm here today. I dare you to say, thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for giving me the strength. I thank you for giving me my right mind. I thank you. Lord, I'm coming with thanksgiving. Listen, enter into his course. He didn't say if you feel like clapping your hands, if everything is going your way, if you like the way Pastor Lee is preaching or you want to hear somebody else preach. No, it's not about that. He said, he gets, he says, enter into my course with thanksgiving. Yeah, and, to, uh, and, to, and be thankful. Watch this. And with praise. Watch this. Be thankful unto him. Be thankful unto him. Watch this. And bless his name. He says, bless can somebody bless the, the Lord. Come on. David says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Not when I feel like it, because God is good. Why do I bless the Lord? For the, the next verse says, for the Lord is what? He's good. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. Listen, even when the situation is not good, God is good. Listen, even if your help is not good, God is good. Listen, he wants you to know that for the Lord is good. His mercy is withheld judgment. Is everlasting and his truth endures. Watch this to all generations. Come on, somebody give God some praise. So we're commanded to give him praise this morning. God is good. You may not be feeling good, you may not even look good, but God is good. For the Lord is somebody shout, He's good all the time. Woo! Oh my God. Woo! Hallelujah. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. In the morning, he's good in noonday. Oh my God. He's good at nighttime. I, I know y'all heard everybody say this. I want to say, I heard somebody say he's like Campbell Soup. He's mm, mm, good. God is good. Come on. Come on. See, see, we think he's not good because what we're going through don't feel good. But God is still good. I declare. He's real good. I promise you. God is good all the time. And all the time, that's why he says, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. And if you got breath, then you know you're a witness that God is good. I'm going to get up there. But, but we, we, leave, we lose focus of that. We lose focus. We lose focus of our priorities. God says, watch this. Seek ye first the kingdom. He said that I have priorities for you to follow. Here's what's important to me. And oftentimes we get so caught up with our own desires things that we want to do, our own goals, our own pursuits, and we begin to chase those instead of chasing the glory of God. Instead of asking God, what is it that you would have me to do? God, show me what's important to you. God, because if it's important to you, it's important to me. God, right now, I know my job's important to me, but God, show me what's important to you. Now watch this, you gotta get this, Deanna, because see, 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 sometimes you have to be able, the word of the Lord says it's in God that we live, move, and have our being. Yeah. Meaning that everything that's important to you in your past may not be important to you right now. See, you got, you got to ask God to show you what's important to you right now. See, as, as see, see, when you're a, when, when, say, when you're um, carrying a child and you're birthing, the most important thing is, is that child, and you have to, that child is your priority. Listen, it's not your job at that point. That's why you take off your job, don't you? You take off your job to so you take care of your child. Because that child right now is your priority in this season, in this birthing season. You, this is your priority, whatever God has placed in you. And nothing 
nothing comes before that because God is birthing something in you. When God has placed something in your spirit, when God has placed something in your spirit so strong and it's almost time to birth, oh my God, who, who is this Who is this message for? God is trying to birth something in somebody. And in this birthing season, God doesn't want you to put anything above what he has placed in you. If God has placed something powerful in you, and, and see, but well, watch this, watch this. But see, after, see, right now, Jesus is not a baby during this time when they lost him. See, I promise you, all the stuff that Mary been through, because see, she had just got engaged. She had just got engaged. So right then, her priority had to be her man. It had to be her wedding. But see, but see, and then all of a sudden, all of her priorities shifted. Somebody shout, shift. They shifted because all of a sudden she got pregnant before she got married. She got pregnant before she even got with her husband. Hold up, wait a minute. See, but see, 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 God will sometimes watch this. See, this is what I came to tell you today. God will, God will sometimes, God will often, he'll often shift your priorities to show you his power. Oh my God, y'all want to know why y'all watching me on live now and why you're not sitting here right in front of me so you can and, and clap my hand and high five me and why you're not high five? Because listen, God will watch this. God will upset your priorities so that he can show you his power. I promise he'll do it. He'll do it so that you can know who he is. No, because we lose focus. We lose sight of who he is sometimes. We've got our priorities, and that priority is for, was for that season. Look, Jesus says, oh, I'm not a baby anymore. Listen, you listen. So, so you have to pay attention to me. Now he's 12 years old, about to be 13 years old. And, and he's in the temple. And watch this. And, and they went up to Jerusalem. As it was their custom. And so they got used to doing the same thing. They, 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 they went to Jerusalem and they get caught up in custom. And so they got so caught up in the custom that they lost sight of their child. Watch this, watch this, watch this. So 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 I'm I'm, I'm telling you uh, um, three reasons that you can lose sight of Jesus. I, I didn't give this to her, but y'all can write it down if you want to. And the first one is customs or tradition. Tradition is something that you hold sacred, but God says nothing about it. Wow. Right. Wow. Huh. It's something that we hold sacred, and the church has so many traditions, and now uh, so many churches don't know what should I do. Should we come? Should we go? What should we do? Should we not have church? What should we do? And we get used to so many traditions, and, 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 and God says, away with traditions, away with religion. God wants us to fo focus on a relationship. Here it is. You see, you're so used to doing the same thing. You think you're doing a good thing because you're going to church, but you're just doing something out of tradition. And God doesn't want you to focus so much on, on, on religion that you lose out on the relationship. God says, I'm all about relationship. So they were, they were, they were following their custom. And they were going to the temple, thought they were doing a good thing. And so what they were doing, they were walking. They were walking in a cross. So it's the custom. Your customs or tradition, things that you do all the time, uh, uh, or, or watch this, the things that you can find common. They were going to uh, Jerusalem, and the way they were going there, it was a long journey. It was a long journey, and since it was a long journey, since it was a long journey, uh, what they would do, they wouldn't travel alone. So all the time, I started to say all the time, so all, oftentimes, with any, whenever uh, they would travel, they would travel uh, in large groups, in, in, in like a crowd, in like a crowd or a company. They would, see, because, because it would take them a long time to get to where they were going, and if they went alone, what would happen, what would, could possibly happen, somebody could attack them. You know, uh, they, they were fear, so they, they would travel in large crowds. They were traveling crowds, and oftentimes with their family. And watch this, you have to understand, so here they are, they were in the crowd, and the Bible says that, that, that Jesus was in the crowd with them, and they were walking. Uh, and, and, it's, and, and watch this, as they were walking in the crowd, uh, Jesus is kind of, just kind of, they kept going, and Jesus kind of lagged behind. It says, it says, verse 42 says, and when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days as they had returned, the boy Jesus, watch this, he lingered behind. He lingered behind. So here they are walking, thinking that they're walking in the crowd, thinking that Jesus is right along with them, but he just lingered behind in Jerusalem. And so what happened, you have to realize this, it was so many people with them and they're just walking along. They're just thinking that Jesus is still right there with them. I want you to understand this. Jesus was not Mary and Joseph's only child. See, um, Mary had, I want to say, four other sons at least. 
And watch this. So she had her other children, and she got, she was familiar, she was so common, she may have saw some of her other children right there and, and got comfortable with seeing her children and wasn't paying attention and realized that she lost Jesus. And so, and that can happen sometimes. We get so caught up in common things, do you know, common things, and not just not really want to call her other children common, but they weren't a miracle. They weren't they weren't the miracle working God. They wasn't the savior. No, 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 no. Here she is. She had a she had a miracle child. And the reason that I can call her other children common is because she had them the way everybody else did, the common way. Husband, wife, they y'all y'all understand what I'm saying? She had them come. So sometimes we can get focused on things that are coming that, that, that we miss the miracle, miss what God has for us. We get so fo focused on things and think that everything is just the same old thing, and the whole time we have a miracle right there in our presence. See, and that's what I'm trying to say is that we have to focus on our priorities and, and, and things that are coming. Um, we, have to, we can't lose sight of, of the immediate things, uh, lose sight for the important things, for things that seem to be immediate. Does that make any sense? I want you to understand this because, because, because we come to church and, 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 and we feel like that the, the presence of God is not, is not uh, uh, what it should be. No, the presence of God is here. Is that our focus is off. We have, to, we have to lift our focus. We have to not treat it as common. Come in church and, and, and just, you know, say, you know what I'm holding sacred is more. You can just treat it common. Eating chips and drinking drinks in the sanctuary, just treating it common. No, no, we can't treat it common. Uh, and, and then when we're singing praises and going to worship, I mean, that's a sacred time when everybody would come together and worship God together. And, and, so, and, and, and so those are some of the things. So, so, so we get caught up in custom is one reason that we, we can lose Jesus. And then we, we start to treat things that are, 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 are wholly common. And then and the, the very last thing um, is that we can get lost sometimes uh, in the crowd. Get lost in the crowd. And see, we have to understand that, that the crowd is good to have a crowd. But we don't want to get so caught up in the crowd that we still don't have sight. Of Christ. Amen. Christ is the most important thing. It's not the crowd. And I have to preach that to myself all the time. And God says, God's, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about, Lee. I'm going to show you. I'm what's important. It's not the crowd. It's Christ. Amen. And they will walk in with the crowd. As long as some of us got a crowd, we all right. Listen, listen, and listen. As long as there's a crowd, then we're all right. And, and, and see, when you, lock, when you lose sight of Christ, just because you're in a crowd, you're doing what everybody else is doing. You're saying what everybody else is saying. We can lose focus of, of Christ. We get our priorities out of whack. So I wanted to share that. Watch this. So that's how we can, can, can lose sight of what's important. But as we continue to ask God what's important to us, God will continue to show us. Watch this. In Colossians, 127, it says, to them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's so powerful. Christ is in you, the hope of glory. Christ is in you. And anytime, watch this, you have to realize how much power is in you. How much glory is upon you. How much Glory is in you so much that, that you see in the text that, that the people said that they were amazed at Jesus. Why? Because this was Christ. Christ, the hope of glory. And anytime Christ, the hope of glory, the presence, his presence is there, the people can't help but be astonished, can't help but be amazed. And that's exactly what they were. Now watch this. Watch this. When what proves the presence of God in our life is when our priority lines up with his priority. And I wanted to understand that because, see, when we have other things going on, I was talking about how Joseph and Mary had other children. Oftentimes we think that uh, when we say uh, common, I want us to understand that we, 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 we get caught up in responsibilities. I can't worship today because I have responsibility. Watch this. Children, yes, children are responsibilities. But sometimes, so, sometimes um, um, we, make, we put our children before God. And God says, seek me first. What are you saying, Pastor Lee? I'm saying that there I've had I've had parents say, Pastor, I can't come to church today because my child has so and so kind of practice. 
My child has so-and-so kind of, I can't come to Bible study because my child has basketball practice. I can't come to church today because my child has gymnastic work. And, and, and not saying any of that is wrong, I'm just saying don't lose sight of the priorities. When you lose sight of the priorities, listen, then, then that's when things begin to get out of focus. Every time, even now, even now when we have children now, um, when, 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 when the word is going forth, our children are learning to honor the presence and power of God. That's why even though they may be right here in the house of God, and I don't know what Pastor Lee talking about. Mom, they quiet. I'm good. Let them make some noise. Somebody needs to make some noise. Y'all will say amen. I'd rather hear them say some Preach, Pastor. Amen. Let all the children say amen. <laughs> And it's so important, it's so important that, that, that we keep our priorities in focus. Because I promise you, watch this, it's, it's, it's not that, that Jesus just all of a sudden, he just left them. Watch, they went all the way back. They had, they had to come back and realize that he was gone. And it's like that. We can lose sight of God's presence and God's power, and it's not going to happen all of a sudden. No, it's going to happen. It's, it's, it's just going to kind of just, kind of just drift. Drift. Jesus just lingered back. He just lingered, and, and we're just pressing on with our plans, pressing on with, with all the things that, that, that we want to do, press on with, with our, our traditions, our regular routine. God, would, God would doesn't want us to focus so much on our routine that we lose sight of our relationship. He's a relational God, Jehovah Jireh. He's he revealed to us, listen, I want to be close to you. I want to be close to you. And, 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 and the, way that, the way that we have to do that is not get caught up in the routine. God wants us to focus on relationship. So watch this. So here, here's, here's how we find Jesus. Here's how they found him. What's the first thing they do? God show me what's important now. How do you know what's important now in your life? How do you find Jesus, find what's important to God? The very first thing that we have to do is the same thing that they did in the text. The Bible says that they went back. They went back. Here we are talking about elevation, elevation going up, and I'm saying go back. But see, sometimes you have to go back before you go up. Sometimes you have to go back to go up. Uh, which way is up? Sometimes up is going back. Listen, they had to go back, and sometimes it's so important that, that, that we go back to praising God the way we used to praise God. I understand that we're in a new season, a new age. We're in 2020. Everything is digital and high tech, but I promise you, sometimes I just miss old school ways where folk would, like, where folk would sing together. What we, what we had back then, Minister Worship, what we, we had what we call congregational songs. And in congregational songs, it wasn't just the worship team singing and, and bullet in them over there playing. No, it was everybody in the church was singing together. Listen, the, the, the praise team was singing, a devotional leader was singing, and everybody in the church was singing. Sometimes we have to go back to some of the things to bring our relationship closer. Listen, listen, we have to go back to some of the things that got us here in the first place. We have to go back to where we first lost God. We go back when we had, we enjoyed worshiping God, where we would come into the house of God giving God praise. We would sing songs. I remember I was back in the day. They would say, glory, glory, hallelujah. Y'all remember that? Yes. I ain't gonna sing it, but y'all know. Glory, glory, in it. Hallelujah. Since I laid my burden down. Glory, glory. Come on, y'all. The church was saying, since I laid my You heard the church was saying more than you did? Come on, glory. Hallelujah. And they think about how folks talk about it when they're done. They say, friends don't treat me like they used to. <laughs> Friends don't treat me like they do too. Every round goes higher and higher. Woo. Come on, y'all. Then we clap. 
listen, brother. Listen, listen, listen. But sometimes you have to go back to go up. The way you find Jesus, somebody, listen, you have to go back to wherever you lost him. I'm not saying how far you have to go back to wherever you lost him at. If you lost him when you got focused on, on your job, listen, all, all you do is work, 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 work. I just got a text from, from my, my job a minute ago. You know what I did? I turned it off. Click. And if you're watching, amen, God bless you. But watch this. But I'm, I did that turn up because that's not my focus right now. It's not my priority. You got to, to listen, listen. Wherever you, wherever you lost him at, that's where you go. Some, listen, listen. Some of us been alone so long, and, we, and God finally blessed us with a man. Soon as we got a man, we put that man before him. And all we do is spend time with him. If he, if he go to church, I go to church. If he don't, I don't. If everything is surrounded around this man. Listen, listen. If that's why you left Jesus, you got to go back. And put things in the right perspective. And, and put God first. Anywhere you left your focus, you have to go back and put God first in your life. Listen, I, and listen, I, and watch this. And whatever you lost, whatever you lost, and whatever you lost, don't lose Jesus. Don't lose sight of his, how good he is. Yes. Don't lose sight of how good he is. Yes. Everybody's talking about, uh, everybody's scared to, 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 to touch. And, and I get that. We're going to be practical, practical, prayerful, and proactive. You got to touch, but you can talk. Just because you can't touch, that means you can't talk. Can somebody say, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. <laughs> And God says, fear not. You shall not be afraid. I'm here. I'm right here with you. And we can't lose sight. So sometimes we have to go back to, to, to get in the presence of God. Go back. You can, you're talking about worship wasn't that good. The word wasn't that good. But we come up in here not expecting nothing. We have to come expecting, believing God. Come into church singing a song. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. And bless his name. I tell somebody to bless his name. Be thankful and bless his name. Be thankful. And bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. So, 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 so here's how you find Jesus. First thing I do is go back. Somebody shout, go back. Go back. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Uh, I love this one. Um, and then the very next thing you have to do when you lose sight of the presence of power of God operating in your life. Operating on your job, operating in your home, operating in your church. After you go back, the next thing you do is you have to go up. Somebody shout, go up. Go up. Listen, listen. You, it says right there in the text, it says they went up to Jerusalem. It didn't say they went back. It says they went up to Jerusalem. Because, see, see Jerusalem was, it, it was a city. The Bible says a city on a what? On a hill. It was a city on a hill. And every time you went to Jerusalem, you had to go up. Jerusalem hit a, it was a holy city. Jerusalem was also a, a, a metaphor for worship. Every time you go to worship, and that's exactly what they did. They were going to worship. And every time they would go to worship, they had to go up. It says they went up to Jerusalem. Listen, listen, in order for us to find Jesus, we've got to go up. Somebody shout, go up. Listen, everything about God is up. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Come on, come on, come on. I will look to the hills from which cometh my help. Everything about worshiping God, you got to go up. Listen, some of us, they all we do is come to church and sit down and you wonder why your life is going down. It's because you won't stand up. Listen, it's because you won't speak up. Listen, all you do is act up. But listen, God says it's time to go up. God says it's time to lift our hands up in worship. Lift our hands up in praise. I tell you to lift up your voice. Ha! <laughs> 
we have to raise our thinking, raise our perspective. Raise the way we, we, we talk. Y'all sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. All right, I'm done, but I, I want y'all to get it. Watch this. And not only do you go, the very last thing is how you find it. We got Jesus. Uh, here's how you find the deep in the path. The way we find them after you go back, after you go up. What it says that they, watch this, Mary and Joseph, it says they went in to the temple. <laughs> they went into the temple. They went in. Y'all already know which way you gotta go now. Which way the, you gotta go in. You gotta go all the way into the presence of God. You can't stay on the outside looking in. You got to go in. Somebody shout, go in. Go in his presence with everything you got. Come on, give him your greatest praise. Come on in. I will bless the Lord at all times. Listen. And his praise shall continually be. Him. 
Listen, it's not that he don't care what's important to you because he'll give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires. But you have to go in. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Jesus is here, people. God is here. Uh, listen, I said I wasn't going to say you would say that name. I one time so sorry, tired of hearing about the pestilence. Because people talking about pestilence, talking about the problem, and the answer is right here. We have the answer. Jesus is the answer, but we've lost sight when he stared at the waves. The wind and the waves. And God's still saying, look, look. Go up. Go in. Look, look, look. The enemy just trying to distract us, distract his people. God has got a plan. He's got a purpose that he's accomplishing in this earth. And he's called you. You're the agency of the called out ones. The called out ones. That's why you, you come to church even when it's probably not what everybody else is doing. And I'm saying, listen, don't misinterpret what I'm saying because we may not even be here next week. But wherever we are, Jesus will be with us. Amen. Because we found Jesus. We found Jesus. He's not lost. And he'll never leave us, but we find him. And so wherever we are, we're taking Jesus with us. And he'll be with us. When people say you're different, say good. I want, you to, I want you to understand that, 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 that God is here, people of God. Don't, he says, don't fear. Fear not. God is with us. He's right here in the midst of us. He told his mother, and I told y'all that he wasn't getting smart with her. She's like, boy, where you been? Your dad and I was worried. He says, did you know that I would be about my father's business? You birthed me. And you knew what the angel told you. Joseph, you weren't even going to marry my mama. Y'all should know my purpose. You know that I have to be about my father's business. God wants us to don't lose sight of his purpose in our life. It's time for us to be about the father's business. Be in his light. In this dark time. His glory is rising upon us, people of God. God's glory is, is, is rising upon us even now. The glory is rising. It's rising, it's rising, it's rising. It's rising. If there's somebody here, may not even be here, but you have to be watching right now, and you feel like you've lost Jesus, so you've never found him. Listen, today is your day. Today is your day. Jesus wants to be the Lord of your life. He wants you to find him. And all you have to do is confess with your mouth that he is Lord. And believe in your heart. And right now, you'll be saved. Confess that Jesus, I know you're God. I know you're Lord. I know you're King of Kings. I know you're about your father's business. I know you love me enough to die for me. And that you love me enough to save me. Through all of this sickness, I know you're my Savior. Right now, Lord, come into my heart, come into my life. Be the Lord of my life for the rest of my life. And right now, I know that I'm saved. I found Jesus. Come on, somebody, give God some praise. For anyone that just prayed that prayer with me and believe it.